FTR's coming out. Oh, joy. Oh, wait. I forgot. The Butcher and the Baker and the two Lucha brothers drive up in FTR's truck that they have stole. They stole last week and still didn't give it back. <clears throat> Besides the fact that I think the police would have got into it at this point, like I said last week, these guys come in the hottest fucking tag team in the business, outsiders, free agents, a lot of talk, the best in the world at what they do. And two weeks later, the fucking mid card fucking heel team steals their shit. And then they sign an eight man tag match. Butcher and Baker and the Lucha brothers against FTR and the young bucks. R Brian, do you remember right before the midnight express and the rock and roll express started the biggest box office drawing tag team program of all fucking time that Rocky King and the Italian stallion told, stole my tennis racket. And then the midnight teamed up with the rock and roll to get even against them and the new breed. You remember that, don't you? No, of course not. And this of is one of the big not. problems. FTR delivers the goods. Every match they've had on TV has been great. They are. Well, every match we could say that until last night. Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but. They know what they're doing. They're really good. The natural feud, the one that could have been done really well, the one that people would have a natural interest in with the Bucks is over. W the booking of FTR since they've come in has been atrocious. Atrocious. There's no bigger fan of them than me. The booking has been horrible for FTR. That's why I was hoping they'd just go into business for themselves and see if somebody wanted to fucking man up and tell them they were going to do something about it. But apparently they're, they're not, they're going to be professional in which case they might as well just fucking fold up and go home because they have left themselves at the mercy of complete incompetence. Um, FTR and the Lucha brothers started and actually it was good stuff. It made sense. The Lucha brothers slowed down a little bit. You could understand who was pitching, who was catching. Then the Bucks tag in, and immediately it's 100 miles an hour, and the shit starts getting awkward. And the stuff with Butcher and Baker starts falling apart. But now the F FTR heels, Bucks are faces, Butcher and Baker are fucking heels, Lucha Brothers are in between, they act like heels sometimes, but people like them. But why are FTR heels? They have not been portrayed as heels but, on TV yet. But they are. they should be heels, they are heels, but they're not in this environment. So nobody is, what the fuck? They go to a break. They come back. The baker is getting heat on cash. So now the butcher and the baker are heels, but FTR's baby faces. But then cash makes a hot edit. At first, the first segment they did the deal where FTR would just tag each other, which that's small comfort and a little help. At least that was good in the midst of all this shit that shouldn't have been happening. But then cash makes a hot tag to road warrior buck. And immediately, uh, Road Warrior Buck starts making a comeback on the Lucha Brothers, and it looks like kids in costumes playing wrestler. And then it got really complicated, and everybody did everything to everybody, and nothing made sense. <clears throat> and finally, and FTR was involved in this. I love you, boys, but you see what you've gotten yourselves into. I don't need to tell you this. It's a sad state of affairs. When the best tag team in the world can't show what they can do in either company because one doesn't like tag teams and the other one doesn't like anything that makes any fucking sense. Did you see where the Young Bucks and FTR tagged each other in all at the same time? Yes, I saw that. You realize, of course, you can't do that. That's never been a thing that you could do and nobody's ever done it before. And for the people who didn't see this, one member of the team gets tagged in and then turns around and tags the other one. The other one steps in and turns around and tags another one. The other one steps in until they're all tagged. So they're all allegedly supposed to be legal for the 10 seconds that this goof mark promotion allegedly gives you to double team when nobody ever fucking pays any attention to that either except the announcers when they're being buried by talking about it when it's not happening in the ring. Then they did a, the Bucks did a double superplex and FTR did a splash and a senton or whatever the fuck it was <clears throat> for a two count. All four of these guys hit one guy 
with a goddamn move and there was a save. It was a two count. And by the way, tag teams, here's something else you apparently don't know. When you get tagged in, you have to make contact with your opponent before you can tag out. Otherwise, it's not legal. It's been that way since the dawn of fucking time. But now on both programs, they're doing this where they tag a guy in and the guy steps in and tags another guy. No, you can't just make this shit up. <clears throat> anyway, everything then came to a halt so Road Warrior Buck and the Lucha Brother could do their stupid ch trade chop spot. A Lucha Brother did a Canadian Destroyer over the top rope onto a guy, onto a pile of people standing there waiting to catch him. Holy shit, holy shit. Stupidest looking thing I've ever seen. And then Road Warrior Buck super kicks Dax by mistake and the Lucha Brothers double team Road Warrior Buck and pit him one, two, three. Cash is nowhere around. The brother's nowhere around. Balding Buck. The fucking Lucha Brothers, I know they're big stars in Lucha, but let's face it, they got a ceiling here in this country, which is basically the amount of people that watch this fucking hokey program. And that's it. So their best tag team in the world, FTR, and their supposed best tag team that is called that because they're vice presidents of the company, the Young Bucks, get beat by a middle card tag team and two Mexicans. In less than one month, they have taken FTR from being the red hot outsiders, getting all the attention and all the talk to another team on the roster and not even an impressive one. Congratulations, you amateur fucks. The, I wouldn't be able to fucking bury this much talent if I was trying in a month. If I was going to sit down and say, how can I write these television programs to make these people as meaningless as possible? I couldn't come up with this shit. Comments before we move on. I'm getting tired of this. We got stuff to do. Well, I think I enjoyed it a little more than you did. Although... As you pointed out, there were a lot of ridiculous moments. There's nothing more ridiculous in all of wrestling than tough guy Matt Jackson. Nothing at all. He's called Road Warrior Buck for a reason. It's completely ridiculous. In the midst of all this chaos, stopping and doing the trading slap spot in the middle of the ring. I hate that. We've seen it on this show. Yeah. Several times recently. Not a fan of that. Obviously, next week, it's... FTR versus the Lucha Brothers. I am actually curious how that's going to be. That's going to be a big test for these guys. I don't think at this... I, I, the Lucha Brothers early in this match working with FTR showed that they will slow down and listen, but I don't honestly think... I think there'll be a language barrier. Lucha Brothers are just... They're too Lucha and not American enough. I don't think it's possible to have the quality of match with the Lucha Brothers that FTR has been known for. I, I, they may can get it out of them. I'm not optimistic. They should have come in and started cutting promos on the Bucks, attacking the Bucks, have the Bucks. See, let's see what the Bucks can do. Make their lives miserable. Let's see the Bucks cut a fired up promo where they're not just laid back SoCal douchebags. With a man bun. Because they're mad with about a man bun. Hey, by the way, if I remind me, if I'm ever in the same room with a man wearing a bun, I should take a baseball bat to his fucking head, just on principle. Well, the point is, they have bungled the booking of FTR coming into AEW. Now they're just a couple guys on the roster. And that was the exact opposite of what they should have been. Everyone's been waiting for this match. There's been a debate amongst fans about who's the best tag team. Now they're teaming up with these idiots and sharing finishing maneuvers with them. Imagine if the bad guy and Big Daddy Cool, when they showed up on Nitro 25 years ago, the next week had been booked in an eight-man tag with two of the WCW guys on their fucking team. Well, that's, that's a bad example because that is one of the most successful things in the history of wrestling. What if... When the Legion of Doom went into the World Wrestling Federation in 1990, they started teaming up with Demolition. Good one there. That would have been rotten too. But it might have been better than the fucking ventrilo ventriloquist dummy. What if the original Midnight Express came in and teamed with the Midnight and Express? And teamed up with the Midnight Express. <laughs> 
What if they had a handicap match with Nyla Rose against Kenzie Page and, and Kylan King? Or Kalen King, whoever the fuck. Let me get this straight. Nine months that this television program has been on the air, and since that time, since it's been on the air, a lot of people decided to quit breathing it. But when they have already botched Nyla Rose's booking beyond all hope, abandon all hope, all ye who enter here, then, after nine months, after she's won and lost titles and matches and bumped for 90-pound fucking Japanese schoolgirls, then they give her her proper debut match. <laughs> 